Hey everyone, it's me, Frank Affronti with the Watch Clicker team. And today I'm going to be bringing you something a little different to the channel. We are going to be showcasing a field review of the latest launch from Spinnaker, the Spence 300. What better way to kick off summer than with a multi-day backcountry hike into the great outdoors with a killer diver? Let's finish up packing and I'll give you the rest of the itinerary on the way. A full gear list will be in the description. The Spence 300, along with being the latest from Spinnaker, also just so happens to be the thinnest 300 meter diver on the market coming in at just under 11 millimeters. The watch is sized at a beautiful 40 millimeters and in my humble opinion, may be the peak summer diver. The Spence 300 is a stainless steel dive watch coming on bracelet along with a leather strap. The colors are this crimson red, black, blue, hickory brown, and sea green. The lug to lug is 48 millimeters, but with the male end links, this extends out to 54 millimeters making the watch wear substantially larger on bracelet. Inside is the Miyota 9039 automatic. The Spence is the third watch in the last month that I've had in with the 9039 and I'm here for it. The 9039 allows a much thinner profile than most other movements. The Spence will retail for $650 USD. We will be heading up north bright and early to Rocky Mountain National Park to hike a strip of trail that I've been after since moving here to Colorado in 2020. The permitting process for backcountry camping within the park has become more competitive than ever. The first leg will be just over six miles from East Inlet Trailhead to our first site of the weekend, Slick Rock Campsite. Slick Rock is just past the first of five alpine lakes along this trail and will put us in great shape to do some exploring on day two. Although I found the stainless steel bracelet to be comfortable, with the amount of elevation gain we will have on this trip, I opted for a ribbed NATO from Cheapest NATO Straps for the weekend. Because of the thinness of the watch, the added half from a NATO strap is much more manageable. Along the trail, a diver is maybe the perfect companion. I prefer to time 30 to 45 minute efforts and then break for water or snack consumption. It is all too easy for me to convert my leisurely hike into a workout if I don't do this. And the last thing I need is to get altitude sick or just real sweaty on the trail. The 60 minute bezel on the Spence handled this task with ease. Both our campsites were solo sites meaning we were the only ones there. This first site was nestled between two creeks on a rocky outcrop. What's up everybody? Kenzie and I have arrived at Slip Rock campsite. We're about to get set up and enjoy the night. It's about seven miles in and it was a bit of a slog, not gonna lie to you. So we, we just took a quick bath and while we were away, it started a, a quick little hail. Um, you could probably hear it, it's hitting us pretty good. Wave, wave. Nothing out of the ordinary or that we can't handle, but uh, caught us off guard for sure. With incoming weather and the exhaustion from the day's hike, we were out by 8 p.m. The long night's sleep and early mornings are one of my favorite parts of these trips. The morning starts with gathering of water from the creek and grinding of fresh coffee. The Spence proved unnoticed even though I forgot to take the watch off before bed. Brewing coffee at this elevation proves challenging because water boils about 10 degrees colder than normal, meaning the extraction of your beans takes longer. The Spinnaker let me track the 6.5 minutes of extraction and a cup of coffee eased my pounding caffeine headache. Along with the bean juice, I tracked the cooking of our dried camping food. This morning was oatmeal and after a lazy morning we trekked the 45 minutes to our destination. Lake Verna.
The second lake we also had all to ourselves, save a few moose. The lake was deep and featured snow-capped peaks along both sides. The hottest part of the day was perfect for a quick dip in the 40 degree water. The Spence's 300 meters of water resistance proved more than adequate for me to not concern myself with worry as we splashed. We dried out on the rocky shore while boiling water for tea and timing the cooking of some ramen for lunch. With inclement weather moving in, we napped and then gathered supplies for a day hike to the third and fourth lake. The third lake along this trail, Spirit Lake, was by far the most stunning. The short two hours of hiking between Verna and Fourth Lake and back were the most enjoyable by far of this trip. The stretch to Fourth is unimproved and unmaintained trail. Really, you are just following moose footprints and hucking yourself over fallen trees and crossing stream after stream. We returned to Verna for dinner just in time for sunset. We were blessed with an incredible showing of Alpenglow to go with our fresh tea. For a few short moments, the crimson dial matched perfectly with the mountains surrounding Lake Verna as the fading sunlight set them ablaze. Afterwards, I scouted for potential compositions for photos later that night. I set an alarm for midnight and along with the bright loom of the Spence, a tripod, and my camera, set out for a few hours of shooting the stars. So we are out at the lake. It's 1 a.m. and we just set up the camera. We're about to leave it to do a time lapse and we'll see what comes out. I'm gonna be really quiet on my way back up and we have our bear spray handy and hopefully we don't have any any encounters wish me luck cloud coverage was a little challenging but my camera was able to capture the edges of our galaxy passing overhead of the lake The hike out took us roughly four hours, about 90 minutes quicker than our hike into Slick Rock. The Spence hadn't left my wrist the whole trip. The longer it stayed on, the more appreciative I was of the sleekness and reasonable sizing. A lot of times these reviews are deep in the weeds about uber specific qualms that I may have as I am shooting in incredibly manicured settings. All of that is kind of bogus when you can take a watch out and get a sense of what it would be like if this was your watch. The Spence is everything you could ask for in a watch that you put on and never take off. There is not a setting that I could not wear this. The few complaints I could see someone making would be about the indices and semi faux aged coloring of them, or that they could be slightly more refined in their application. But honestly, I took this watch into the wilderness for three days and over the course of a marathon plus of hiking and never thought twice about it. That is exactly what I want in a watch for adventures like this. So to me, Spinnaker nailed this. If you are in the market for a summer adventure companion or just a banging 10.9 millimeter thin diver, this could be it. Thanks for joining us for this field review of the Spinnaker Spence 300. Check out Spinnaker's site for more information, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe.